On a biting winter's day, amidst the cold, the wind and the mud, Syrian children living in squalor, being raised amongst the trash as mothers struggle to create a sense of home. This is Moria refugee camp on the Greek island of Lesbos. What is life like here? It's not good, like uh, in Syria. It's Europe's dirty secret. Moria, originally built for 2,000, now housing more than twice that number. And to escape the overcrowding, some are moving here to a makeshift camp on the other side of the barbed wire fences. Like Fatima and her family. Oh, your hands are cold. She says life for her three children isn't what she expected. <laughs> and every day she struggles to keep house and home clean, however futile. Her husband, Abdul Jabbar, tells me he escaped from one form of death only to find another. But here, he says, it's slow. Back in Syria, death came quicker. And this is why they're here. The war in Syria that continues to rage. Last week, this was the scene in the district of Ghouta, one of the last rebel-held areas. Over 400 were killed, almost a quarter children. In 2015, this crisis hit a tipping point. The pack stations crossing the perilous seas. And the children, like two-year-old Alan Kurdi, washed up on a beach drowned with his mother and brother simply because they tried to reach safety. Thousands of migrants and refugees have died in the waters that surround Europe over the last few years. Although the absolute numbers have gone down, there's been a significant rise just since the fall. And imagine how desperate you must be to put your kids in a rickety boat and send them out across these seas. In the last four years, it's thought more than 13,000 people have died or gone missing in the seas around Europe. And without the Greek Coast Guard, countless more would have drowned here. Very dangerous. They can uh, lose their lives. You must have seen some of that. I have seen uh, drawn people. It's a very lawful uh, thing to, to see. For some, their journey began in Africa, but most are fleeing the Middle East traveling through Turkey and on to the shores of Greece. You can see why they've come here. Look at it. It's beautiful, it's relatively prosperous, and above all, it's safe. But instead of an island paradise, many here have found a living hell. And they're now stuck, unable to leave the island until their claims for asylum are heard. And that's taking months, in some cases, years. We're just heading into Maria camp. This is the most notorious camp here on Lesbos. You can see up here the barbed wire and the fencing that's designed to keep people in and obviously keep some people out. On this day, we were given a rare but limited tour. Uh, we're from uh, ABC News. Here is the, the section uh, for families. The man in charge here is Giannis Balpakakis. You are a refugee and you're allowed to stay, or we don't think your claim is legitimate uh, and you have uh, to leave. How long does that take? It's about four months. And we've heard some people uh, six months, maybe longer. Yes, yes, of course. He says they're overwhelmed, struggling to keep up with the never-ending influx of migrants and refugees. Hello. Hello. I must take them. Where they will go? Where? In the roads? People will ask. Why are the conditions so bad here? I think the only problem is that too many people. It's very difficult. It's and not easy. And we have a lot of, of stuff for cleaning all the area. But after an hour, it's the same. The conditions are inhumane. That was a fight just over food. Then you can make out the queue up there. People are in line basically collecting trays of food. Someone with security, someone had an argument that shows how tense and how difficult things are here, that it ends up in a brawl in a dirty street. And those who live here tell us the chaos, just a small part of the problem. Outside the camp, we met 14-year-old Anas Hamada and his friends. Anas, when you came across from uh, Turkey, what was it like? <laughs> Large parts of the camp are closed off to outsiders, but we were getting numerous reports of appalling conditions there. Many we spoke to told us the same thing, and they wanted us to come inside and to show us. 
But such have been the level of complaints we feel we need to see inside for ourselves. We're going to try and get to look at some of the facilities here. We've seen some videos shot by the camp residents themselves showing some pretty hideous conditions. And to be fair, the director even acknowledged that it was pretty bad. Inside, we go searching for Anas. Hey, Anas. And here's what we found. A third of a dirty tent where they all live, sleep and play. Anas and his family lost touch with their dad while they were fleeing Syria. Months later, and they still haven't heard from him. How hard is it for you, Anas, and your brothers and your sisters without your dad here? Anas asked us if we could help him trace his father. He Does wanted he a that? SIM card for his phone. So what's happening now is that uh, Anas and his brothers and sisters are trying to dial their older brother who lives in Germany. Remember when Anas left Syria, they don't know what happened to their dad and this is the first chance they've had to try and find out. Hello. But there is no word. Bushra, what's life like here for you and your family in this camp? <laughs> it was tragic. Hey, come here. It's okay. come here. A sadness settled on the children, small, vulnerable and lost. Charities like Doctors Without Borders are trying to help those in need. So many already in distress. We're working at our much maximum capacity at the moment, but every day we have people coming. And we also have a lot of children coming back. And many have severe psychological trauma from the war. Those trying to provide some counselling, struggling to cope with the demand. For 27-year-old Majdalin, the memories of war and the trauma of the camp have made life unbearable. Have you ever had any dark thoughts, any bad thoughts, because of that? Majdalin tells me she's attempted to take her own life, repeatedly. Like so many here, she's lost in a world without hope. Look, this is someone's blanket. This is where they're hanging their clothes. And that's the entrance to their door. I mean, you can see some of the clothes are on the floor in the mud. The conditions in here are really horrible. Even the kids are doing this because of the smell. It's so bad and the, it's just filth absolutely everywhere. And there's a hidden danger here. Many women avoid the bathrooms at night, scared of the risks of sexual assault. I mean, it's just... It's like an informal encampment, not something that's actually run and organised by a government, by the European Union. This really is shameful. The camps are melting pot of misery. Migrants and refugees from not just the Middle East, but Afghanistan and Africa. Moria, no good, no food. I'm sleeping all the whole days. No good, no nothing. Many, like Basil Okuri, have had enough. So I see suffering here. No, we're not seeing the humanity. Seen treating us bad. He says he's been here almost two years. We've been thinking maybe they get to save us. Now they're not saving us, and we're not seeing anything better from them. So it's a bad life we are living here. Most of these kids have never had a proper childhood. They were born into war. They've grown up on the run, and too many are stuck in limbo, still waiting for the security and sanctuary they so badly deserve. For Nightline, I'm Ian Panel in Lesbos, Greece. Our thanks to Ian and his team. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.